Mia has now joined a very small list of people to win majors on all three major competing continents being North America with Rise and Grind 2023 and arguably Apex 2021 question mark 22 question mark with his numerous wins in Japan and now of course King of Fields number four sorry King of Fields 95 number four uh, where he went to France and did amazingly well. We're going to be watching two of his sets, his winner semi set versus Bloom Forever and his grand final set versus Crepsile. I'm pretty sure this feed has been only done by like four or so people being like T, Zachary, Leo, and then I think now Mia, maybe Gluto. I don't I don't think I don't know if Gluto won anything in Japan. So very small list of players. I could be missing one or two, but it's a very, very exclusive list. So now let's go. Oh, the game just started really, really <laughs> just rawly from the uh, recording. But as far as I'm aware, uh, Mia didn't really lose any games before this. And uh, of course, we have seen Mia with a lot of Bayo experience. He has fought Tama P. Daifuku multiple times. He's fought Lima multiple times. So Mia knows this matchup, I feel like at this point, very, very well. Uh, but you know, there isn't a top level Game & Watch player in Europe, and uh, Mia just immediately gets started with a fantastic ledge trap sequence because of Chef. I'm trying to be nice because it's a Game & Watch video, but we all know how we feel about Chef. Ooh, Bloom can punish those, um, the, the up bees out of shield. Uh, if it whiffs, but uh, it is definitely going to be difficult, and it can lead to a kill potentially, but right now Mia's just on top of it, the Witch Time not hitting either, no two frame, but a turnaround grab after that dash attack, which, you know, classic, just, you know, pivot grab stuff. Charging up smash, not gonna hit. It's really still interesting to me that Mia doesn't really charge smash attacks like that. Like, he does it occasionally, but not too much. But I mean, he just gets consistent kills with things like that, uh, you know, the forward tilt off of the chef, or just generally forward tilt in general. He's very good at getting, uh, like, those juggle reads. Uh, but Bloom not able to get anything bigger there. Okay, gets the up smash on the uppy, uh, and smiling. He knows he can still do it, even though, you know, Mia is a fantastic player. And there's more Chef at the ledge. Yeah, going to FD as Bayo is honestly crazy in this matchup. Like, you do technically get the juggle situation, but you're gonna get ledge trapped forever with no platforms. Like, you're not really that worried about up air, in my opinion. The Bloom counter picks to small battlefield, which makes sense. Again, it'll make his combos a little bit better. Uh, it will make Mia's combos also better, but I feel like as Bayo, like you're getting kills off your combos, whereas Game & Watch definitely is not. That's gonna be a fair. Are we immediately gonna get a kill? Uh, I feel like Bloom could have got something there, but didn't, wait, what? Did the bomb hit him? A witch-timed bomb actually hits Game & Watch? That is super strange. Wow, what a crazy kill for Bloom. Amazing stuff right there. And that's going to be the stock, which, I mean, that's kind of what I'm saying. Like, these platforms do help uh, Bayo quite a lot. Definitely more than Game & Watch. But now the chef. And yeah, you have the ability to go to the platform. Even though, yeah, me, of course, can read it. He's going to be a very good player. He will read those type of things. Oh, gets the spike too on the uh, attempted ledge stall. Very good stuff. The bullet art's not going to work there for uh, Bloom as well. That's going to be a punish on the platform. Yes, indeed. But it's not as big of a punish as it could have been if it was FD. Up tilt. Up air. I was going to say, if he can delay that fair and get to the platform, that'd be insane. Good damage for Bloom, but not going to kill quite yet. Mia, of course, one touch can be so much for him. Just so strong in the advantage state, but almost getting hit by that witch time in forward air. Uh, so he's got to be careful with that. Boba gets the back air on the double jump. No triple jump available now as well, but misses the two frame with the down smash, and Bloom Forever's going to fight back. Wow, what a nair. Okay, double side B. Wow, really good pickup by Bloom Forever. Again, that is going to be uh, the second stock now. Another lead for Bloom, but I don't know. I don't know the set counts of these stats. I didn't check beforehand, so I don't know who wins what games or what the set count even is. But we're going to have another chef there. No punish. Uh, you know, Bloom Forever does air dodge successfully away, and the Dwitch Twist with the triple jump not going to hit its mark, unfortunately. For Bloom Forever, that would have been the kill if so, but not going to get the kill, and now we are in a really bad position with these chefs that are, of course, a classic Game & Watch ledge trap. But not going to get the kill, so Bloom Forever lives to see another day in this second stock. There's going to be up B, up, full hop up air. Sorry, not up B, up air. And that's going to be a forward tilt. We have even stocks, 48%, sorry, 46%, I missaw it after the up air. So that is going to be 
pretty close right now. Shouldn't be the kill with that forward air, but Mia does have to jump away again. He knows the threat ranges of these combos, so he's definitely going to be very, very uh, aware of all of these different DIs and SDIs, I feel like. And that's going to be a Witch Time whiffed there, so Mia gets so much percent off of that and has Bloom in disadvantage. Not going to hit that there. Up he had a shield, good SDI to get out of it, but still maintains the good position. The forwarder hitting the ABK is huge. That's gonna hit the spot dodge. Bloom is back off stage. Again, this off stage position has been so good for Mia. No down smash yet. Back air. Obviously, Bloom at death percent. Gonna be a little bit farther away with the sludge trap to try to make sure it's safer regardless. Jab grab not gonna work, but dash attack hitting under that nair is kinda crazy. No invincibility, so that chef into dash attack is gonna hit, but not going to be the stock quite yet. Back air, not gonna get the final hit, so still no kill. That one's still comboed. That was honestly insane. Mia with a little bit of a fist pump, knowing that game was very close, and you wanna be up a lot against a Bayonetta. You don't want it to be close. I can't believe, no, I, okay, it didn't combo, but I don't know what Bloom did that he didn't, he wasn't able to move up immediately. I don't know if he didn't have a double jump or something like that, so Bloom, Immediately counterpicks back to small battlefield. I feel like the stage overall worked for him. Again, got that really early kill at the beginning, so that is what you want. I mean, I guess it wasn't an early kill, but the platforms helped him get the kill, so let me rephrase that just a little bit. Uh, gonna be able to get a punish on that up B, but not going to be a crazy punish. There will be some good damage, even if it's just a couple specials into an aerial. Yup, no shield grab, great spacing by Bloom. Again, I feel like Bloom's been doing a lot of correct stuff. Uh, in this matchup, he just hasn't been able to convert enough for kills, and the SDI for me has made it a little bit difficult to get the more standard combos. Uh, yeah, had to turn around, so that is going to be Mia surviving yet again, getting punished for the spot dodges. The spot dodges are probably the thing that Mia is the most acute of punishing. Speaking of which, that's gonna be the up smash. Really, really good stuff by Mia Bloom. Definitely spot dodging a lot. I mean, I don't blame him because he doesn't want to get empty jumped. He doesn't want to deal with the plus frames of the forward air that can just lead into a grab. So he's trying to spot dodge. And Mia is just expertly punishing them. Just fantastic stuff right now. I was going to say this is the type of play you expect from one of the best players in the world. And then he did six smash attacks, which I guess that's also how that works with Game & Watch. Oh, and reads the witch twist all the way out there. He postured himself like he positioned himself so well before that. Just making it so that uh, Mia was uncomfortable to go near the ledge and then just read the uppy with the full hop. That is a huge lead for Mia. Up smash though immediately for Bloom is going to get him a small reprieve from that lead. Uh, and by small reprieve I mean the two stock lead, not the overall lead. Oh, and he fell out at Witch Twist, that's crazy. Double up tilt for Bloom is going to be some good damage, but not gonna have any specials in that combo. There's the ABK, there's some Witch Twists, SDI up, meaning uh, nothing big could happen from there, but the forward smash on the landing, Bloom Forever does even up the stocks immediately. That was a crazy stock for him. Dash attack, and the ledge trap is so important. Which time does not come out. Tried to get the air dodge read, but not gonna come out. The ABK is, uh, have I been saying BDK? The ABK is coming out, and then this position is just so rough. A lot of people will air dodge here to just not get hit by the follow-up of this Game & Watch up B, but if you are ready, you get down smashed, and yeah, it's a rough, feeling Mia with the 3-0 over one of Europe's best, and we are going to go to the player that had a really, really good run here, Crepe Soleil. Uh, Michael over him in a video, if y'all don't mind watching Steve, let me know down in the comments below if that's the case, because he got second here, winning, or going to winners finals, and then we're going to be watching the grand finals here, so let me know, let's get into the grands. So Crepe Soleil, of course, a Wario main who also now plays a lot of Steve. I don't know if he mains Steve or mains Wario at this point, uh, but had a really, really good run here. Game & Watch, of course, or sorry, Game & Watch versus uh, Steve. Of course, a very explored matchup for Mia with his rivalry with Akola. So he knows this matchup, and again, Europe not having a top uh, Game & Watch player is honestly kind of insane. I feel like, you know, Game & Watch is a popular enough character and obviously a good enough character that someone would have picked him up, but they haven't yet. I don't know, but back air from Crepe Soleil, not a lot of materials online, probably gonna have to go into iron if he doesn't die immediately, but dies to the forward air. And again, these two did play in winner's bracket with Mia. Of course, coming out with the lead or the victory, so 
you know, he's sitting pretty in Winterside Grand Finals. Crepesole beating Siski in Losers Finals to bring it back. Siski also beat Gluto here, so, you know, good stuff to him. And this advantage state is just so rough. Knowing that the uh, minecarts can be upbeat, the down air can be reflected. So it is pretty rough to land in this matchup when someone as competent as Mia is the one holding the sticks. And Crepesole has got to hold that chef because, wow, that was very, very strong. For Mia, this should be the stock. No misses, and then SD's trying to get a hit. Maybe he's trying to TBC fair, so it would have been faster. But that is a quick three stock for Mia. I barely even got to talk about that game. It was just like two strong advantage states, and that's it. I think you do have to minecart if you are Steve and just you know try to react to the uppy or the position of the uppy and try to air dodge away from it. Mia yeah, gets a hit there. And uh, gonna have the temporary percent lead, but I don't think this is how this ends up going. Uh, of course, Crepe Soleil doesn't really have the option to go Wario. Like, technically he does, but Wario Game Watch has always been seen as a bad matchup for Wario, even back in the pre-Mia days, with Meister having a very dominant record versus Gluttony. Um, so, you know, it's really, really scary for just Wario in that matchup because nothing really works and you do get to uh, just like you lose the close quarter combat game as Game & Watch or sorry as Wario against Game & Watch so it's rough uh, so Steve is definitely the better choice here down smash on the minecart is not going to kill but again stronger advantage state he's just waiting for a you know a, a an anvil to come out from him a great dash back knowing it'll whiff or make the grab with so the down tilt punish is going to be brilliant there by Mia he does take the first stock and I assume this game is probably gonna be a little closer than last uh, hopefully because of a lack of SDs and there's the footstool downer at a shield again very very important there so we do have even stocks and Crepesily using the TNT between stocks so that way uh, he has some stronger minecart materials or not minecart materials sorry building materials uh, it does make the disadvantage worse, which is a little scary because you're gonna have less blocks overall. So, you know, it's a trade-off there. And just Mia all over this position. He's so ready for where the minecarts can go and where Steve can go after the minecarts that he he's just in the know, hitting the roll there. Like, this is just, this is matchup knowledge, you know what I'm saying? There's an up tilt, so gonna be some decent damage. Again, definitely a closer game than last for Crepe Soleil. That forward air is going to, um, oh, so scary. I was going to say the forwarder is going to hit, but it's also going to break the materials. I don't know if Crepe Soleil got them back because I had a pop-up on my screen. Forward air, not going to kill. But again, no iron means that this, yeah, recovery is going to be down airable or back airable. So a little bit rough for Crepe Soleil there. And again, does have the, uh, oh, if he nilled there into like an up smash, that would have been crazy. Oh, gets the TBC or the PBR back air. I didn't really, I couldn't really tell which one. And of course, me knowing the ledge cancel was with the blocks, or sorry, I guess the landing lag cancel because it's not an edge cancel because the blocks just disappear. And now we have a Game & Watch advantage state, two iron on one, iron online, and that should be the stock for Crepe Soleil. So that is going to be uh, you know, last stock situation, which is definitely much better than the three stock game one, but how much can Crepe Soleil do here? Again, I don't know the set count, so, you know, for all we know, this could be very close. Mia getting a free punish, you know, Crepe Soleil knowing he needs that pickaxe for the forward air and the back air. Jab grab is going to connect there, only 11%, no iron online, so this disadvantage will be very, very difficult for Crepe Soleil. If he gets put back in it, I think it's just going to be game. There's downer edge cancel, one iron online. There it is. So no more iron and hits the double jump. So Mia, one game away from winning this bracket. And as I mentioned, becoming one of the people that have had the trifecta victories here. That is a nice banana peel. And so Crepe Soleil, oh, was the crowd telling him to go a character? Let's see what character, it's Yoshi? Of all the characters to go, Mia also has Yoshi experience because of Yoshi Dora and Ron and Fui and like there are so many good Yoshis in Japan so this is a crazy pick in my opinion uh going to Battlefield as well which I think is a very good Yoshi stage yo footstool down B out of shield does that work is, is down B frame 20 or faster oh wow yeah it's frame 19 I didn't know that that actually is that's really good I was unaware of the fact that you could do footstool down B cramp Soleil knowing it though so got a couple of percent but now Mia is in the driver's seat here get the ultra fared though and of course that's going to be an up b out of shield basically anything yoshi does on shield is going to be punished by that charging down smash trying to hit a neutral get up or a roll not going to be the case there so crepes la trying to get back to the ground there's up tilt up air 
kind of down or at a disadvantage. It's really hard though because I'm pretty sure it, it might be too fast to actually beat the game and watch up air. But does the down the down air? Ooh, get the spike Crampsile with the lead. I'm sorry, I didn't know your Yoshi was built like this. My bad for saying anything. Imagine he just like brings it to game five and then gets three stock. Airdog just threw the double jump. Oh no, double jump possible and hits the ledge jump. Mia, very aware of that timing. Uh, Crypsile doesn't want to get up attack there because he's scared that, you know, when he hits it, uh, Mia will let go of the down smash and shield and get an obvious punish, but that's going to be a huge advantage state right now. Big percent lead. The, unfortunately, the back air of Game Watch does out, just beat out in terms of range that command grab neutral B and that up smash is going to be good damage Mia has been in the control this entire uh, Stock it's been very very potent for him and the up air is gonna hit the down B that happened in the bubble Yeah, this is looking rough Mia not wanting to approach haphazardly because the defense game of Yoshi is very good Even if the offensive like pressure might be a little lacking Mia knows this and then catches the impatience of Crepe Soleil with a simple with just with a simple little back air. And then gets this huge advantage state and the forward air. Mia didn't get hit, I think, at all after he took that stock from Crepe Soleil. So now this is a stock lead. One more stock is going to mean that Mia is your 95 King of or King of Fields 95 number four champion. So much damage. Jesus got the double back air too. Trying to get another back air. Gets it on the air dodge, but I do still think double jump online for Yoshi there. <laughs> So scary, nice parries. Again, very parryable, very obvious where those eggs are going to go. And if you're wrong, you end up just shielding it if it's a slightly slower egg. So nice Nair beating out the Nair and a forward air. Crepe Soleil, I mean, hey, this is already better than game one with the uh, Steve. So can't blame him too much. Goes for ledge jump, double jump Nair. Uh, I, uh, I think he landed. Yeah, okay. Gets a down B to the ledge. Back air is going to not hit because of the invincible up smash. And yeah, Mia's just like, I feel like not really threatened right now to really get off the ledge or do anything. Yeah, nice forward air, but not going to be plus enough. So, Crepsily does get the nair out of shield, trying to get the two frame. Not going to be it. Back air will kill at the ledge, but Mia knows this. He's just chilling on ledge. Mia, like a minorly disrespectful player in the way he plays, which I love personally. I think it's very fun to watch. Reflecting the eggs as well. And again, back air will be the stock. So Crepes really trying to find something, but the forward air, the little spin of it, did get hit by that back air. And that's multiple eggs, multiple, or sorry, his double jump expended. So this is simply just hitting the air dodge. And that is going to be Mia, of course, one of the best players in the world. I think like this season, like eight time major winner because of the, um, you know, going back and reformatting of all the tournaments with the new point system. So Mia has a very good shot at being number one this year because of all his major wins as well as a super major win. And again, he does claim the triple crown now winning an NA major, a European major, and a Japanese major. Uh, just again, not a lot of players have done that. So congrats to him. As always, social media stride and partner stuff is down below. Let me know who you want me to watch next. I would appreciate it. Uh, I'm going to be doing a tier list tomorrow on my stream if y'all are curious, just so you know. And I'll see you all next time. Peace. Thank you.